All right, so now we're going to put all these together in, this, in an assembly. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and guess that all of these are steel. Actually, I'm not guessing. Mr. Collins told me they were, even though he didn't specify that on the sheet. Nope, not silver. Silver would be cool, though. So we're going to go through and change all these to steel. How I'm doing that is the shortcut just up here. I can change the material that it's made out of here and what it looks like here. So I can have it be made out of steel, but actually look like walnut. Look at that, it's my walnut but really steel bolt. Or I can just go over here and say clear override. The other way I can do this is if I go to the menu, I properties, physical, material, steel. Apply, close. There we go. It does the same thing though. Doo -doo -doo. So I've just changed all these to steel. So now I'm gonna go and do a new assembly. And what's the first thing you do? Save it. So here's my assembly, fixture assembly. Go through and add in each of these. And looking at the drawing, I'm going to need another end plate. And I am going to need four more pins, four more nuts, and four more bolts. But I'm not going to add those in yet. I'll show you why in a second. So you can notice that I can't drag and move this bolt, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. but it was the first thing that went in, so it's automatically grounded. So what I'm going to do is unground that. Again, that was a right click and select grounded, and then it becomes ungrounded. Now I can move it around. And typically you want to have something that is grounded in an assembly. So I'm going to right click this end plate, and I'm going to make that grounded. So the first thing I'm going to do is pair up these end plates with this flush constraint. That makes those surfaces flush to each other. I'm going to do the same thing here. Then I'm going to slide this apart a bit. I'm going to start putting my stuff in side of it, putting my assembly actually together. So I'm going to start with lining things up on the axes they belong. So I've done my spacer, center pin, disc, bolt, nut, and support pin. Now I'm going to start putting them where they actually go. So I can see, looking at the picture, that this disc fits in right there. And the support pin is going to be resting on there. This center pin right here. And the spacer is going to be on the disc. I know that the bolt going to be attached right there and the nut likewise on this other plate so now I've got like these two sections and I'm going to put them together by mating this end plate to the top of this support pin so there we go oh looking at this it looks like the spacer is not quite the right length so what you should do at this point is open up the spacer just right click open and look and double check your length. Well, I can see because I'm perfect, it's 1.375 inches. So I know that that's right. So then I'm going to look back down at my drawing and see that I can't actually see if there's another disc under there. So I'm going to put another one just to test my theory, and it fits perfectly. So I'm going to assume that that's what goes there. What you re really probably should do is talk to the person who made the drawings. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, you're right. You're a super genius. Here, have a gold star. So, now that I've got those, I want to, you know, line up these discs so they're not actually intersecting these support pins. Probably doesn't really matter, but in the assembly, but if you're actually going to make this in real life, you probably want to double check things like that. That's what Inventor's for. So I'm going to try lining these axes up. I'm already getting a little worried because I don't see it snap together in the little preview. And I'm right. So this doesn't actually work. So again, when there's an error in an assembly, you should go and check the parts. I know, again, because I'm perfect, that these are going to be all right. Checking that, checking that, checking my paper. And I was right. I am perfect. I did it exactly as it should be done. So I'm going to go 
and do a little cheating. Really, again, you should go and talk to the person who made the part drawing. And I'm going to do a parallel constraint by setting the angle between that and this to zero. There we go. Now that's not going anywhere. Oop. This is not going anywhere. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make these flush, so that one isn't going anywhere either. So now I'm just going to tug and pull and make sure nothing's actually moving that I can't move. I mean, obviously this can spin. I don't care if it spins. But they're not sliding out or anything. All right. So you're probably noticing, hey, Gabe, you're missing a lot of bolts and support pins and nuts. Well, I will add those in in a second. I'm just going to do it the quick and easy way. So what I'm going to do for these bolts and nuts is I'm going to select them with a pattern component. And then I'm going to select the these directions, just like doing a rectangular pattern. So I want two in each direction, and I want them to be spaced out by three inches. And here we go. I've got my bolts and nuts added in, all pretty. The thing is, though, with Inventor, one of the main strengths is that if I go here to my fixture assembly, and I say, all right, these holes... I actually want them, you know, offset by one inch. We can see that those move here. Go to the fixture assembly. Got to click this little update. And we see that bolt moves because that's the one that was constrained to that hole. But these ones are constrained to this bolt by the rectangular pattern, which means that you would have to go here and edit this to be, what is it now, two inches. Two. See? Whereas if I would have individually placed those bolts, then they would have snapped together already. But knowing the nature of this part, I mean, on your actual robot, you probably want to make things like that so that they can be adaptive and change. But with this part, I'm trying to show you as many ways to do this as possible. So that's what I'm going to do. And for um, these support pins, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a circular pattern. I've got four each 90 degrees apart. And there we go. This is finished. Woo, you're done. Not yet, not quite. We can see in the view on the paper, That's we'll call that the home view. It doesn't look like this. This is oriented wrong. So what I'm going to do is change this. I'm going to say, all right, this set as front, which makes this the top as well. So home is still referred to there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a new home right here. Set current view as home, fit to view. Now when you press that home button, there we go. Now it's all pretty and perfect and ready. So that's it for all these videos. Um, I hope things went well and you understood. Um, yeah, that's really it. And that's that's all. So... Good luck with Inventor. It's a wonderful program, and I hope your robots never fail. Or whatever you're using this to do. Probably won't be as cool as robots, though.